Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Snyder. This is the East Coast Healing Center. Thank you for joining me today. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. I hope you have a blessed day today. My contact information is eastcoasthealingcenter.pa at gmail.com and my personal phone number is 610-781-6332. If you have any prayer needs, I'd be more than happy to pray with you. You can subscribe click that subscribe button down there on the right side of your screen and hit the bell so you get notified every time I post new content. Click the thumbs up and you'll encourage other people to watch or leave a comment in the comment box. I enjoy hearing from all of you. So this week's message is entitled When Compassion Meets Sin. So grab your notebook and your pen if you want to take notes on things that resonate with you that you want to remember and that will help you to retain things better. It's always good to follow along and jot some notes down. So feel free to do that. As I said, the title is When Compassion Meets Sin. And I'm not just talking about the bad things that people do but I'm talking about today all of the effects that mankind suffers as a result of the fall with Adam. So we know that Jesus reconciled us fully to the Father and he did away with, washed and blotted out all of our transgressions so that um, our flesh has been defeated, sickness and disease has been defeated, but we're not always seeing that in our own personal lives. So we're going to talk about these things today. So today when I mention sin, I'm not just talking about bad things that people do. I'm talking about sickness and disease and all of the results that the fall brought. Symptoms in our body are just a temptation to believe that we're sick. Uh, symptoms are to sickness what temptation is to sin. If you think about that for a minute, um, the moment a symptom starts, say a headache, um, the, it's like a simultaneous feeling and thought at the same time. You start feeling pain and then your mind automatically says, I have a headache. It's like a, within a split second of feeling the pain, you have the thought. And that's the time when we're tempted to uh, believe that we have a headache or cast down that thought and that imagination and that symptom and get rid of it. No, I am the healed of the Lord by Jesus stripes in 1 Peter 2, 24. I am healed. Thank you, Lord. And the headache will leave. So, as I said, um, sickness and sin, they're equal. They came about as a result of Adam, the sin at the fall, and not sickness and disease did not come about as a result of individual sin. So, if you are experiencing symptoms in your body, it's not because you have um, failed. It's not because you did something wrong. It's not anything that you did from your past that brought the sickness upon you. It isn't your fault. Um, I'm not talking about here reaping and sowing where someone who regularly abuses drugs and they suffer the effects of that. I'm not getting into that today, but I am talking about on a general sense when we experience symptoms in our body. Uh, I remember when I was going through a very challenging physical situation, extremely challenging, and a well-meaning brother in the Lord came up to me in church and said, Michelle, you need to find out what it is that has this hook in you. What is this hook that's in you that... Um, Maybe open a door for something. You you opened a door for sin, something that you did. And this thing, this disease has a hook in you. And now you need to go to the Lord and ask him why. 
And I sat there for a minute and I was like, a hook, a hook in me. Oh Lord, what what could I have done that would have brought this horrible thing upon myself? What what did I do? And I sat there confused for a long time. And um, if it wasn't for um, one of my friends talking some sense into me and saying, it's not anything that you did. It's just you're, you didn't know what you had available to you. You didn't know what Christ had fully done for you, that you don't have to put up with this. You don't have to deal with this. You didn't bring this upon yourself. It's not your fault. It's not as a result of sin from your past. It's not as a result of sin you're committing because Christ took care of all that. You're a new creation in Christ. So that was a relief, you know. So um, some of you may believe in that, um, that you, as a result of a generational curse, that you're dealing with sickness and disease in your body, and that's not true. Christ became the curse for us. We've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Galatians 3.13, Christ became that curse. So it's not a result of generational curses. It's not a result of something that you did wrong. It's just not really fully understanding and knowing what Christ did for us, that you are a new creation and that you are in the kingdom now and sickness and disease is not in God's kingdom. It's not in heaven. It's not where God exists. Jesus didn't experience it until he took ours upon himself. So as a believer in Jesus Christ, sin and sickness do not belong to us. Our sins have been blotted out as well as sickness. So um, the title for today's lesson for this week is entitled When Compassion Meets Sin. So we're talking about compassion and how Christ had compassion on the multitudes. I'm going to share several examples of that. But then we're going to get into two specific women who met Christ's compassion for two separate individual problems and what Jesus did to meet them where they were at. So compassion is the number 4697 in the Greek and it means to have the bowels yearn it means literally to have it's like your gut feelings what are you feeling deep inside of you in your gut you know we'd call it a gut feeling in our modern day vernacular it's the seed of our emotions it's not just a feeling of sympathy or feeling pity or feeling sorry for someone oh you feel sick i'll make you a bowl of chicken soup it's actually having compassion on them that you are doing something about their condition. And we know that Jesus did something. When he had compassion on someone, he did something about their condition. He didn't just leave them in their situation. He actually resolved it. So let's take a look, for example, uh, one example where Jesus had compassion on on someone, actually a multitude of people, turn to uh, Matthew 9, and we're going to take a look here at verses 35 through 36, and it says, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So he had compassion on these people. He taught them, he healed them, but then he realized there's so many he, in, ver, in uh, chapter 10, it says, <clears throat> excuse me, the 12 apostles were then sent out. So he sees the needs 
of the multitude of people, but he knows that he's just one person. So he equips his disciples, the 12 disciples with the same power and authority, and he sends them out and he tells them, as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. So Jesus knew that he would be a lot more effective if he kind of deputized his um, disciples with the same power and authority that he had to meet the needs of the people because he would be more effective with than just himself. He did something about it. He saw that they were scattered like sheep having no shepherd and they needed help. He needed help. The people needed help, so he engaged the help of his disciples, and he taught them what to do. Now let's turn to Matthew 15, verses 29 through 32, and 29 through 32. This is when Jesus also heals many. He says, Jesus departed from there, skirted about the Sea of Galilee, went up on the mountain and sat there. Then great multitudes came to him, having with them the lame, the blind, the mute, the maimed, and many others. And they laid them down at Jesus' feet and he healed them. So the multitude marveled when they saw the mute speaking, the maimed made whole, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. Verse 32, now Jesus called his disciples to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry lest they faint on the way. So this multitude of people, it doesn't specifically say how many there were in this passage, but it took Jesus three days days to heal all of these people men women children and afterward he continued to have compassion on them because they were hungry they were with him for three days and he didn't want to send them away hungry so out of compassion he not only healed them and set them free but he fed them okay so in the gospels it is um, at least 12 different times in the Gospels, it gives examples where Jesus had compassion on the multitudes. Here's another example in Mark uh, chapter 1, verse 40 through 42. It says, Now a leper came to him, imploring to him, kneeling down to him, and saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus, moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. So in Jesus, Jesus was moved in the seat of his being, in his guts. He was moved with compassion for this leper and he touched him. And we know that this leper, you, you weren't allowed to touch lepers. They weren't allowed to come out in the public. They were unclean, but Jesus had compassion on him and he touched him and he cleansed him. Um, we also have the example of the widow's son, the widow actually, not her son, but the widow in Luke 7 verses... thought I was at the right place. Luke 7, uh, verse 13, it says, When the Lord saw her, the widow, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came and touched the coffin, and those who carried him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he presented him to his mother. So Jesus saw this widow. He knew that she this was her only son and he had compassion on her and he brought her son back to life because he knew 
that she would be lonely all of those days that she had no one to help her, no one to care for her, no one to spend the rest of her days with. And he had compassion on her and raised her son to life. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at these two women, these two different women with two different plights um, and how Jesus had compassion on both of them and met their needs, though they had two different needs. So let's um, turn back to Matthew 9 and we're going to start in verse um, 20. Matthew 9, verse 20, it says, and this is the woman with the issue of blood. Now we're comparing this woman with the issue of blood with another woman who needed um, compassion for another situation. So Matthew 9, 20 through 22, it says, and suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind touched the hem of his garment for she said to herself if only i may touch his garment i shall be made well but jesus turned around and when he saw her he said be of good cheer daughter your faith has made you well or made you whole is the correct translation there and the woman was made whole from that hour now we see that this woman she needed healing in her body. She was desperate. She was destitute. We know she spent all she had. She was an outcast. She was unclean. She could have been stoned for um, coming in that crowd. And we know that she was. She had nowhere else to go. There was nothing else that she could do. And she came to Jesus and he said, Your faith has made you whole or your faith has saved you now turn with me to luke 7 and we're going to take a look at another woman here um in verses 36 through 50 now i'm not going to read all of this you're going to have to um, read this for yourself later but in verse 36 it says then one of the pharisees asked him to eat with him so he went to the pharisee's house and sat down to eat and behold a woman in the city who was a sinner and she knew that jesus sat at the table in the pharisee's house brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping and she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of her head and she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil now when the pharisees who had invited him saw this he spoke to himself saying man this man if he were a prophet would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him for she is a sinner now, it doesn't say exactly what type of sin sinner she was or what she, sin she was famous for committing, but everyone in this town knew that she was a sinner. And Jesus says to her, he tells the story, he asked the Pharisees, there was a man who um, owed, um, it says a certain creditor who had two debtors, one owned 500 denarii, the other 50, and neither of them had money to pay. And he said, um, when he had nothing to which to repay, he freely forgave them both. He said, tell me therefore, which of them would love him more? And Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. Who did he, who loved Jesus more? The one who had the greater need for forgiveness or the one who was kind of self-righteous and jesus is drawing a correlation between the pharisee and this woman who needed much forgiveness and he says to this woman he says this woman who kissed his feet washed his feet wiped them with her hair um it, he says to her therefore i say to 
to you her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. And he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. And those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, Who is this who even forgives sin? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Now notice the last words Jesus says to this woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. And those are exactly the same words he said to the woman with the issue of blood. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has saved you. And in the Greek, these are the exact, it's the exact same sentence he said to both women. In the Greek, it is, um, he pissed his cell, sesekin say, which I'm not a Greek scholar, so I hope I said it right. Um, which translated in English is the faith of thee has saved thee. Notice these are two women, one needed healing, one needed forgiveness. What did Jesus say to both of them? Your faith or the faith of thee has saved thee. Now we know that the word saved is sozo. It means to save, deliver, protect, heal, preserve, and make whole. The woman who was a sinner, she never said a word, but her actions spoke volumes about her humility and her contrite heart. She needed forgiveness. She desired forgiveness. She showed it by washing Jesus' feet with her hair and her tears and kissing his feet. It was a sign of her um, contrite heart. And Jesus said to her, the same thing he said to the woman with the issue of blood. Your faith has saved you. Now, so Jesus had compassion on these women. He saw their plight, even though they were two different needs. One needing healing, one needing forgiveness. But he had compassion on them and he met their needs where they were at. So it doesn't matter whether we need forgiveness for sins or healing in our bodies. Jesus took care of both needs through his life. Um, we know through his sacrifice for us, he healed them. He forgave them. And we also have the example we know of the paralytic in Luke 5. And when the four friends dropped the paralytic through the opening in the roof, Jesus said to the paralytic in verse, um, let's see, in verse 20 through 24, he said to the man, but that you may know the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise and take up your bed and go to your house. But when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, he says, which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or rise up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man, I say to you, arise take your bed and go to your house. So what was easier for Jesus to say? Your sins are forgiven or get up. Neither one was easier. They are both equal. So I, um, the message for today is whatever your need is, Jesus' compassion meets you where you're at. Whether you need healing in your body, his compassion is, he has moved towards you with compassion. He has provided the means for your healing through the stripes that he took on his body. We know in 1 Peter 2, 24, it says, by his stripes, you were healed. You are healed. You are made whole. He has had compassion on the plight of man needing healing in her, our bodies and forgiveness 
for all of our sins. So whatever your need is today on this wonderful Valentine's Day, God loves you. He has mercy and compassion towards you. He will meet you where you're at. So I just speak health and life over your body. I command your bodies to be healed from the top of your head to the bottoms of your feet and expect those symptoms to leave because remember that symptoms are to sickness what temptation is to sin the remedies are the same so we can apply that to our lives it doesn't matter what the need is jesus is moved with compassion toward us and he meets us where we're at so god bless you thank you for watching this week Remember that God is for you, God is with you, and God is inside you. God bless you till next time.